Colorado families, this week on Community Chat, Hagen Norris PLLC truck wreck and brain injury lawyers is speaking with Dr. Bradley Poppy, founder of Injury Reporting Consultants. As you all know, I represent catastrophically injured families who face an uncertain future of physical limitations, cognitive dysfunction, scheduled treatments, lost or diminished work, and restricted activities. In short, they have said goodbye to the life that they once knew and are learning to cope and adapt to this new life. The question is, how do we advocate for our clients' future needs? How do we tell the story of what five, 10, or 15 years from now is gonna look like? Well, Dr. Poppy has been instrumental in a number of my cases to help us tell our client's story, what they have been through, what they're gonna be going through, and what the cost of their future will be. So how does he do this? Dr. Poppy performs functional capacity evaluations, vocational and earning capacity evaluations, medical cost predictions, medical billing reviews, and creates life care plans. Don't worry, he's gonna talk all about this and give more explanation, but we want you to know that these things are out there and that this is the base. This is what your attorneys and your providers should be talking to you about. He has spent thousands of hours with catastrophically injured family members to understand their limitations, their goals, and their next steps towards reaching their goals. We welcome Dr. Poppy to talk about his journey. What is it like to, for him to perform um, some of these capacity evaluations on catastrophically injured clients and what families should know about the long-term care uh, of a catastrophically injured person. So we welcome you, Dr. Poppy. This is a real treat. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. I'm super excited about this. Well, you do so many great things for so many catastrophically injured um, family members. And um, what we want to know, first off, is how did you even get here? How did, what is your journey that led you to do um, something that truly helps people be able to understand what their future is and to be able to advocate against the almighty titans, um, the insurance agencies, to get what they truly need? How did you arrive here? Well, I, you know, it all started back in, in high school, really. I, you know, I hurt my shoulder playing softball and I had to go to physical therapy and, and get rehabbed. And I just really kind of started to see that, that uh, interaction with the therapist and, and, and me as a patient and what that entailed and, and how involved they were with my care to help get me back to that kind of prayer level of function. So you, I coupled that with my love for anatomy and physiology and then Presto, I go off to school and I become a doctor of physical therapy and I practiced for, gosh, well, I'm still practicing, you know, for 20, you know, 22 years later. Um, but over the last probably, I'd say five or six years, I started to kind of take a, a, a pivotal change in my role or, or what I needed and, and wanted to do professionally from a more of a clinical component to an expert component. I still see patients, I still keep up my skills, and I still have a love for evaluating patients. But at the end of the day, you know, in personal injury, we as practitioners or clinicians, we would, you know, see the patient for X months and get them back to the, you know, the best that we could. And then we were, you know, we discharged the client or patient and then we're, we're hands off. It's like, okay, attorney, go ahead and get the case settled and we'll wait for settlement. So I thought, well, gosh, how can I provide more value to the attorney and help kind of steer that ship for them um, and, and provide a little bit of, you know, rehabilitative and medical case management on some of these patients to help get these cases settled in mediation versus trial, okay, and provide value on the back end so, so that we can be involved in the treatment, but also help get it to the finish line sooner and, and, and get it done more effective and efficient. Absolutely. And you found a way to do this. There are a bunch of these capacity um, evaluations that you do that truly help uh, our clients understand, wow, I didn't realize I could do this or couldn't do this. Oh my gosh, am I not going to be able to have this job in the future? Oh my gosh, I couldn't take this test. I, I couldn't function. There's just all these things that are just enlightening to the client to realize after a full day with you, multiple days sometimes of testing, wow, I'm limited. This is what the future lies. And you really use that in talking with providers and everything to lay out what the future is, um, which I think is really great. Now, what we would love to do is, is step in your, you know, the patient's shoes. What is it like to come into um, your office and take these clinical evaluations um, for us that 
you know, are just hearing about it for the first time, what are these evaluations? What do they test? What is it like to be with you uh, for these amount of hours and go through? And, and what do these evaluations help you do? Sure. So you know, from, a, from a patient standpoint, um, when they get to me, they are typically physically and mentally exhausted. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they've been in treatment for X months or X years. Okay. And then their attorney will refer them to me to help to kind of bring everything together in some of these evaluations. And really at the end of the day, it's, it's a, it's a collaborative effort between the, the, me, the, the treating you know, doctor or the expert that, 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 they, that they have hired, the, the client and the attorney to really look at this case, not from a impairment-based case management perspective, but a functional impairment case management perspective. So years ago, when a client was in a car accident or a patient was in a car accident and they had a, a, a herniated disc or a ligament tear or something in their neck, that was a, a policy limit driver or it, it, adds a, it added substantial value to the case. And while we still really rely on a lot of those diagnostic imaging findings, the insurance company says, so what? Mm -hmm. Yes, you've got a herniated disc. Who cares? Most people sitting in my office have some degree of a disc herniation. It's called life. Yeah. So we have to measure how those impairments functionally affect their quality of life. Okay. And that's how we, that's how we document these through the functional capacity evaluation. So let's, let's kind of talk about what that is and what it kind of through the eyes of a, of a client or patient, what they go through. So the, the background of a functional capacity evaluation is it's the gold standard or industry standard on how we document how someone's impairments and or disabilities from an accident, whether it's car work related, slip and fall, irrelevant affects their life. More specifically, their ability to perform work-related activities, activities of daily living, and leisure activities, okay? Um, the evaluation is quite extensive. It's around a four-ish hour evaluation. And I always tell attorneys and or clients, think of it this way. The FCE helps to uh, confirm the diagnosis, but quantify its severity. Okay. The insurance company needs to understand how it is affecting their livelihood. And this is the only way that we know how to do this. Okay. This is not a, a five minute um, defense independent medical examination where they say, can you stand up, sit down? Okay, you're good. No, 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 no. So the FCE is broken down into three basic parts. First part, client comes in, we talk about what happened in the accident, what treatment they had, just so I can kind of get my 30,000 foot view and wrap my brain around what's going on. Then I do a full out orthopedic and neurologic evaluation, all right? Um, range of motion testing, strength, palpation, neurologic, all of that. But the bulk of the FCE is a 20 item standardized functional abilities test where everyone gets the same test, no matter if you have a neck problem, a pinky problem, a whole body problem, irrelevant. Everyone gets the same test. That's why it's so objectively reliable, valid, and sensitive. The test range in things like lifting things, stacking things, carrying things, overhead work with your hands above your head, squatting down, climbing stairs. It, it's a full body assessment. So at the end of that four-ish hours, I know what that client can or cannot do. Okay, and how it's going to affect their livelihood. All right. Um, then, if I determine in my functional capacity evaluation that this client either A, cannot go back to work because of XYZ restrictions, or B, maybe I deem appropriate that they should be doing part time work or, or whatever that may be, a lot of times we'll then take that baton and pass it off to a vocational rehabilitation counselor. Mm -hmm. And those individuals will then perform what we call a earnings capacity loss report. They will put dollar signs or monetary losses to my functional impairments. All right. So example, a uh, construction worker making X amount of dollars and he's done that for 20 years. And I, they can't do that because of their impairments from their 
auto accident. So an I deem they can only do sedentary computer type work. Okay. So then the earnings capacity loss will then show decrease in pay extrapolated over throughout the course of life expectancy, as well as decreased competitiveness in the workplace, things like that. And that's a full out thesis per se as well, um, but only kind of showing the monetary damages. And I think, oh, and I think that's so important for just stopping there is for people at home that say they have been in a terrible car wreck um, or a truck wreck, we represent people for, and they're injured and they're getting an offer from adjusters. I just want you to listen to this. Listen to all the things that can be done in your case that might need to be done in your case. And it's really important that you consider this. Um, and so what Dr. Poppy has just been talking about is a full examination of not only the body, but the ability and tasks to complete things. This is called activities of daily living that we talk about all the time and an attorney may talk about but this is fully tested by you. It's not subjective what our clients are telling us. You watched it and you really um, were able to understand everything that they're going through and what they can't do. Um, are there any other exams um, that you do during your testing or anything else that you talk to the clients about to really understand truly what they're going through? I do. And, and I would say a very popular test, it's, it's, it's a spinoff per se, of that functional capacity evaluation is the cognitive functional capacity evaluation. Um, I can tell you how many times I see, again, I see the, the client in the, in the, the ninth inning. That's when, they, that's when I get them. And throughout the entire course of their treatment, they've been triaged to take care of their orthopedic stuff, their neck, their back, their shoulder, et cetera, which good, understandable, but unfortunately, this goes mm -hmm. undiagnosed or underdiagnosed. So when I see that client and they come in and they talk to me and they say, gosh, I've been having short-term memory problems. I have some blurred vision. I have ringing of the ears. I, I have decreased attention. I'm agitated all the time. I have some dizziness, et cetera, et cetera. Hmm. So then we got to start talking or thinking along the lines of mild traumatic brain injury and or post-discussive syndrome that never was either diagnosed or treated. So I will then do a two-day cognitive functional capacity evaluation where I do an orthopedic exam, just like we just talked about, but also then very similar neurocognitive tests, just like neuropsych would perform, okay? But I quantify how they are affected in a ecologically valid environment. So when patients go to neuropsych, they're going to take all of the the, the mind game tests to determine those cognitive impairments, but they're done in a very quiet chamber, proper lighting, zero distractions. Well, that's not real life. Okay. How many times are you in the office and you're like, Hey, can everyone be quiet? I need to focus on this, this uh, email real quick. No. So I do the very similar testing, but the radio's on. Maybe the phone's ringing. People are walking around. There's distractions. So again, I'm, not diagnosing those cognitive impairments, but I'm quantifying the diagnosis, how it affects their life. So those are, I do a lot of those and it really helps to add value to the case, but also from an understanding standpoint, the, the insurance adjuster or opposing counsel should it be in litigation start to understand not only the orthopedic issues and how they're affected, but also the cognitive deficits as well. I think that's fantastic, Dr. Poppy. So we take a lot that you do as well. And so one of the things is we will never go into litigation without meeting our clients in their house to see how they're functioning. And also, it's very important for me that if my client has any inkling of a brain injury, that I meet them at a coffee shop that's very loud and not in a office. That is where I'm going to see their difficulty in concentrating to even be able to talk to me. So we take a lot uh, from this, these brilliant things that you're doing um, with regards to the testing to know that you're really doing real life stuff that um, we're gonna be able to understand how they are truly um, functioning. And remember, if you have a traumatic brain injury and you're meeting with Dr. Poppy for two days, you are spent. And so it is, he puts you through the ringer and that's for good cause that he's going to be able to show what really happened. Because more likely than not, the EMS and the ER discounted your brain injury. More likely than not, you didn't tell your friends and family for many weeks because you didn't know how to articulate what was going on. 
in many ways, if you were given a brain um, MRI, it's going to be positive because you don't have brain bleeding or brain blues. And so there's a lot of things that have happened along the course where you were told you didn't have a brain injury. Um, and so this is a great way to get some objective findings on that. Um, is there anything else um, that you do during these testings um, to kind of help you fully understand? And, and also kind of for you, how do you then use this? Um, you have all this great testing. You've now put dollars to the results, but what happens next? Yeah, so I'm also a certified life care planner. So how do these impairments and disabilities affect their life in regards to what is going to be required future medical care wise to treat these clients throughout life expectancy. So the two different types of reports are you know, life care plans and medical cost projections. They are basically the same report per se, but just title a little bit different. I typically title my life care plans for those individuals who are catastrophically injured, things like traumatic brain injury, spinal cord injury, amputations, full thickness burns, things like that. Something where that patient is going to need lifelong care, assistant care, okay? Versus a medical cost projection is more of probably 99% of what most attorneys out there in the community see. It's your whiplash associated problems from a car accident, uh, so maybe they had uh, some physical therapy, some chiropractic. They have uh, they had a, maybe a medial branch block set injection, maybe onto a nerve ablation, and then possibly a cervical fusion or maybe a, a torn rotator cuff, things like that. Okay, but the the algorithm or the methodology is the same um, with both reports. It's a medical records review. It's also an an, an exam with the actual patient themselves. Okay, I'm going to put my hands on them. I want to know how they're, I'm not going to take Dr. Smith and Dr. Andrew's word for it, even though I will be calling them to get their future care recommendations. I also want to be able to opine and participate in the life care plan of medical cost projection because those, those reports are a collaborative effort from a lot of people to determine one's true functional deficits and what they're going to need. Okay. So after I examine them, review all the medical records, then I will be calling all the treating providers, whether it's neuropsych, whether it's orthopedic, chiropractic, pain management, whatever. I get their recommendations and then I cost all of those out through life expectancy. And then I, of course, write the report. Um, and it's not just future, you know, we use the term, what, what's their future, future med meds? Or, or medical mm -hmm. it's yes it's all of that but i think a lot of patients might think well i have a, a lot of other needs than just medications or or injections or surgery which is true that's where the life care planner comes into the life care plan and says hey i'm going to do a home assessment so mm -hmm. i'm going to go to Miss smith's house and say hey you're now in a wheelchair do we need to make this house ADA accessible? Do we need to put a ramp in? Do we need to blow out some walls? Do we need to put a, a roll in shower, et cetera? Or are you even fit to live here anymore, Miss Smith? You have a staircase, you are in a wheelchair, you can't get to your bedroom. Hmm. So it's, it's things like that as well. And or assistant care, do they need assistance with activities of daily living? Or can they bathe themselves, feed themselves, dress themselves, et cetera? So it's, it's a very um, large thesis, per se, on the client to really, they're very thorough. And, and the client goes through, they're an active participant in this. So I ask them a lot of questions to really get an accurate report that really, that really stands up in trial or mediation. Hopefully we can get it settled before trial. That's fantastic. And so before we leave, do you have any tips for, now we've talked to the community and just knowing, um, hey, before you ever pick up a call and talk to a lawyer or decide to resolve this case yourself, there's a lot that you should have known out here about your future treatment care. So I think you've been really helpful for that. But if there's any lawyers listening that do personal injury, what are some tips that you have for them about these types of cases? 
for both the 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 listening attorney and or the potential patient that's going to be calling an attorney it's really the if, if it's if it's the patient they need to make sure that law firm obviously understands injury of course but really what are the the value adds that must go into building a personal injury case to help educate properly the insurance company okay because the these these attorneys that they get low offers from the insurance company what the insurance company is telling them is you're not educating us properly to de to, to to ask for that amount of money you have to bring heavy artillery okay you have to educate us and and educate us functionally what how is this patient's life changed so the attorney law group must understand like we talked at the beginning of the podcast it's functional based impairments not impairment based case management okay it's how do those impairments how are they affected functionally what's the functional problems and how it affects their life so whether you're a client or a patient or an attorney that's what they need to be looking for when they when they hire on a law a law firm that understands how to to build that case with with value via education Perfect. Well, thank you, Dr. Poppy, for all your insights. We really, truly appreciate it. We're going to include all your detailed contact information in the show notes. Um, and we are so thankful for you. I know you have a wealth of extra information about catastrophic, catastrophically injured clients that you would like to share. And we're hopefully going to have you again on this podcast. So we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. All right. Thank you.